Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The Caribbean community pools resources as relief efforts get underway in hurricane-battered Bahamas. St. Lucia talks water resource management resilience in the face of climate change. Musicians exchange notes through the OECS Mentorship and Artiste Development Program. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Chairman of the Caribbean Community, Honorable Alan Chastney, has expressed solidarity with the government and people of the Bahamas following the devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian. Grand Bahama Island and Abaco Islands felt more than the brunt of Dorian, which landed as a Category 5. It remained stationary over the islands from September 1st to September 3rd. Thousands of homes and buildings have been destroyed. Five deaths have been officially confirmed thus far in what Prime Minister Honorable Hubert Minnis has described as a historic tragedy. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney says at this time, CARICOM stands ready to give whatever assistance is required to deal with the efforts of this tragedy. Honorable Chastney informed that in advance of Hurricane Dorian, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SIDEMA, took the lead to coordinate the regional response mechanism and deployed two rapid needs assessment teams to the Bahamas. The teams have since informed that the immediate needs of the islands are water and water pumps. And the government of St. Lucia has pledged its full support to the recovery efforts of the Bahamas after the passage of Hurricane Dorian. Doreen Gustave is the acting director of the National Emergency Management Organization. The water system is wells, right? And you can just imagine with the storm surge, the high level of water that the wells are no longer, um, well, can no longer provide the clean and safe water that they would need. Um, however, we cannot say that right immediately that we are going to appeal to the public for bottled water. We need to de determine how best we can get this um, resource to them. Ms. Gustav notes that discussions are ongoing to determine the best way possible to get water to the Bahamian people. The Bahamas is a way off. Um, it's not as close as Dominica where we could get one of our partners to come on board and, and sh ship the, the items. So we'll, they will determine how best do we make an appeal for um, persons to contribute monies and send to them, or do we get the water and get someone to take it up there to them? Meantime, Sedema has advised that monetary contributions would be easier logistically as procurement of needed items can be purchased at locations closer to the Bahamas. The government of St. Lucia thanks persons who have expressed interest in this humanitarian thrust and encourages everyone to make their cash donation at the following accounts in the name of the government of St. Lucia. The passage of Hurricane Dorian and before it, Hurricanes Irma and Maria, have presented a new frightening normal to the Caribbean of super monster storms. Caribbean governments and agencies over the years have been examining resilience at every possible level. Here in St. Lucia, there has been focus on the critical water sector and the management of water resources. Janel Novel reports. Higher temperatures and more extreme, less predictable weather conditions, all effects of climate change, are projected to affect the availability and quality of water. Changes in water availability will also impact health and food security. It is for this reason that the Water Resources Management Authority, WRMA, in St. Lucia is working towards ensuring that the country becomes more resilient. Acting Director of the WRMA, Jason Ernest, highlighting the critical need for conservation, explained some of the initiatives undertaken by the WRMA. In terms of, okay, looking at Wasco Index as a baseline, so it's there, how best we can protect it so that the water quality is not affected because the more Wasco has to shift the intakes higher up into the watershed, that means less of the, the water resource that they would have at particular times of the year. Because in St. Lucia, we have many tributaries, and Wasco have the intakes on tributaries. So the higher up you go, the, um, the, the drainage area you have coming into those areas would be sig significantly diminished, mm -hmm. and that would affect um, 
the areas that are being supplied um, from, from those intakes. So it's one of protecting what we have now mm -hmm. and then seeing um, what um, uh, initiatives that w we can implement to actually um, uh, augment our water supply. Project manager at the WRMA, Rupert Lee, indicated that the authority has embraced an integrated approach in ensuring that there is a reliable, sustainable, and equitable supply of water. The WRMA also works closely with the forestry department as forests provide significant benefits. It reduces evaporation, for instance, and, um, it, and, and trees, forest trees, retain water, one. Secondly, they they are critical in um, maintaining um, slopes, um, um, keeping the, the, the structural integrity of slopes intact and preventing um, what we, know, we, we always have uh, a problem with during times of storms, landslides and so on. Whenever you have a landslide, you lose your, a portion of your water resource through groundwater Water is at the core of sustainable development and it's critical for socio-economic development, energy and food production, healthy ecosystems and for human survival itself. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. In other news, in preparation for the new school year, a delegation from the OECS Commission visited the Debera Combined School in Babono to deliver school bags and supplies. The relationship between Debara School and the OECS was established approximately 10 years ago. Joseph Edward Shalmine, Program Officer in the Environmental Sustainability Cluster, and Ms. Sally Ann Alfred, Paralegal Officer in the Legal Unit, continue to work with staff of the OECS Commission to coordinate recurring donations to support the students. So good morning, Mr. Joseph. Um, in keeping with the, the OECS Commission's commitment to continue assisting the Debara School and the students of the Debara School, we are happy to present with the bags this morning, which was made possible through the contributions of staff of the OECS Commission. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. So on behalf of the teachers, the staff, the, the parents and the children of the Debara Primary School, I would like to say thank you to the staff of the OECS. We are always happy to accept um, the kind of assistance that you have provided. We are happy that you, are, you have partnered with us and we look forward to continuing with this partnership. Our children have benefited significantly from your help and from your assistance, from your generosity. And so we say thank you once again. We are happy to have a partner like you. Thank you very much. The island's Minister for Education has been handing out her own assistance packages to returning students. Anissi Antoine tells us more. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development and Parliamentary Representative for Miku North, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabat, presented bursaries to students in District 7. Over the past three years, Minister Rigabat has collaborated with various partners for the benefit of children and parents from the constituency of Miku North. I believe firmly that to give our children a sure start was critical to ensuring their success in their adult life. The bursary program has expanded to include primary, secondary, and tertiary level students. We are honoring the top performers from the primary schools in our district. We are also affording some of you the opportunity of uh, pursuing a tertiary education at Sir Arthur Wills Community College. Some of you have asked for knapsacks, others for books, and in some cases, we are also distributing what I call back-to-school hampers. The bursary program was financed by the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, the St. Lucian Diaspora, and the business community of Mikud North. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Was that an earthquake? No. no. What do you do if there's an earthquake? Drop, cover, and hold on. What does that mean? You drop to the ground, take cover underneath a sturdy table or desk, 
and hold on until the shaking stops. Well, there's no table or desk. Stay away from the walls, windows and doorways. Use your hands to cover your head and face and crouch in a corner of the building. But what if you're outside? Go to an open space away from buildings, trees, street lights and utility wires. Drop to your knees, protect your head with your arms and wait for the shaking to stop. Remain alert to your surroundings. Be prepared to change where you are if necessary to promote your safety. During an earthquake, anything that can move and fall, parts of a building including doors, walls and windows, furniture and appliances can be a hazard. Remember, protect yourself from anything that can move. Do not panic. As soon as you feel the ground shaking, drop, cover and hold on. This message brought to you by the Viewport South District Disaster Preparedness Committee and NEMO and funded by the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, says government will continue providing the enabling environment for sportsmen and women in St. Lucia to excel. Minister Estefan made a statement to Parliament recently. Today, Mr. Speaker, our young people, our sportsmen and women, continue to make us proud. Mr. Speaker, words cannot express the sincere gratitude we feel as a country for the level of effort and dedication demonstrated by our team sports personalities. Mr. Speaker, it is my distinct pleasure as Minister with responsibility for youth development and sports to bring to your attention and that of our Honorable House the recent competitions and the recent successes of our various athletes. The Youth Development and Sports Minister made a commitment to sports people that government will continue to support their efforts to achieve excellence. Mr. Speaker, I wish to assure our dis distinguished sportsmen and women that my ministry and this government will continue to support their efforts. We will continue to do so with programming, with the establishment of our sports academy, and that is going to help our footballers who, who, who are going to be the first ones to occupy that academy in Brazil. They will be supported, for, co we will continue supporting them financially as we have started and we will continue to roll out all our major sporting facilities to make St. Lucia a place that everyone in the Caribbean would want to come when it comes to sports. Minister Estefan's statements comes after a month in which St. Lucia recorded regional and international success in the sporting arena. One of the island's sporting personalities achieving success on international stage was javelin thrower and national champion Albert Reynolds, who won a bronze medal at this year's Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. Senator the Honorable Fortuna Belrose, who is also the president of the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated, put Reynolds' achievements into greater perspective. Albert had many challenges before he went to Panam. Many, many, many challenges. From injury to, to, to joint pain, you name it, he had it. And if anybody looking at him would say, people looking at him would say, boy, made him ready yet, we're not going to invest in him. But we sat him down and he told us his plan. And what we did was to support that plan. Senator Bellrose spoke during a ceremony to mark Reynolds' success and that of a number of the island's sports personalities. The ceremony was held at the Prime Minister's official residence. That's your update for today from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucia was the latest stop for the Music Mentorship and Artiste Development Program launched recently by the OECS Competitive Business Unit. The program connects musicians 30 years and under with established and experienced professionals 
in a series of discussions across OECS member states. Here's Janelle Novell. OECS Music Talk is geared towards providing young musicians with the opportunity to learn from experience and seasoned professionals, creating an avenue to discuss critical issues facing the industry in OECS member states and across the wider region. OECS Commission's Head of Statistical Services Unit within the Division of Economic Affairs and Regional Integration, Dr. Gil Archibald, explained that St. Lucia is the third member state to host the initiative. She noted that the initiative falls under the OECS Commission's Youth Empowerment Society, YES, from which a youth development strategy was developed. It consists of two parts, YES I Earn, supporting the youth in gaining employment and venturing into entrepreneurship, and YES I Am in Culture, which focuses on creativity and utilizing culture as a means of earning. Dr. Archibald highlighted the Commission's goals coming out of the discussions. We hope that the, the music industry in all of the countries can get the sort of um, um, financial support, but um, you know there's always the requirement for legislation, for regulations and policies so that the artists, their, 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 um, their creativity and, uh, are protected. Mm -hmm. Because if people are going to continue to download and stream then you know they're going to eat into the value that they can create from from the ideas and the intellectual property so through that as well the the relationship with the mentors and the mentees the mentees and the artists will explain some of the challenges they are confronting and to see how we can bring that to the member states not individually because the OECS commission one of the things we can do is to have common policies and common legislation which can be applied to all the countries. Mentors for St. Lucia included Irving S. Lochter, Sherwin Dupes Bryce, Claudia Edward Ladner, Arthur Alley, and Tagerson Penn Joseph. Claudia Edward expressed gratitude having been selected as one of the mentors to assist the up and coming musicians. Providing words of advice, she encouraged them to keep striving no matter the challenges, challenges which she indicated can make or break them. The musician also emphasized the importance of exposure as it relates to the growth of a musician. Getting into those festivals, the jazz, the roots and soul, carnival, these are great avenues for artists to begin honing their craft. Um, but at a certain point, I would hope that musicians are seen as something good enough to put as a show and not just as an opening for a show if you understand what I mean. So um, musicians have to always aim to be part of a show instead of being the one opening for the big show. Singer, songwriter, producer, showing Dupes Price, utilizing his vast experience in the music industry, offered advice to aspiring musicians. Most importantly, you have to stay focused, um, set your goals, set reasonable goals, set big ones, and plan backwards, you know. So um, if you're working on an album, you need to look at it from a song by song, figure out your team, build a team. Having a team is very important and never give up and keep pressing on. Simple, but hard to do sometimes. The program also sought to explore ways in which each country can further discussions on major themes and or areas for developing the industry along the lines of music management, marketing, especially in the age of digital marketing, stage craft and presentation, and music production. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Farmers Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. Yona se mania pour contrôler maladie cigatoka noe se pour spray epikemik. I pa bon pour spray diwan la pli e ben sitan mawe e ki kagade akwedi la pli petombe an 3 pou 4 neditan. Paske la pli kay lave l'huile spray a. Osi, i pli me pou spray diwan jounen an le la pani trop van, chale e ben le i pa trop mouye. Le sole la trop chou. I ka fè se fèy fig la e ben banan la piye e ki ka difisil pou se fèy la bien ou si vè tretman ki an lè e ben an ba fèy la. Bon nè le matin e ben ta lè apre midi pli mè e pou spre paske tan pli fwe e se fèy la ka ou vè. Chonje, lè ou ka spre toujou mette pli antansyon a sou se jen fèy la. Pa spre se plan twop e k fè a si wè ou spre tout plantasyon an yon sel kou. Plan ki manche spre sa afekte le zot se plan bien alez. 
Pour plus d'informations à ce manière pour traiter et contrôler la maladie si vous avez une plantation ou un jardin, vous pouvez téléphoner au département pour ménager si vous avez à numéro 451-5494 et bien 451-5894 et bien email à bpmu.candw.lc. Commission Salak a sorti Hod Ministère de l'Agriculture, ensemble avec le Fonds de coopération internationale et développement Hod Pays République la Chine, Taiwan. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arc Voyant. Merci, Ota Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, le département qui est responsable pour l'information à gouvernement cette ci c'est GIS, ça veut dire Télévision Nationale, pays à NTN, à propos de Nouvelle Acquéole, à propos de Primus Hutchinson. Projet pour réduire ce faiblesse commune pays pour des as, ça c'est DVRP, qui a commencé une grande quantité de projets canal au Liban, pays cette ci la semaine passée. Projet DVRP a visité Denry en préparation pour commencer un ainsi projet canal ça là. Visitation projet de VRP à Denry, c'est une plusieurs activités. À ce mois qui est passé, pour essayer de bâtir la résilience entre Godlo à ce commun pays cette ci Particulièrement, façade sud-est, Castri et Mikou. À toutes ces communes qui sont sensibles pour Afalai et Godlo, ce qui a concerné le VRP à plus, c'est les conditions du système canal. Travailler sur le canal en bas projet ça là, a adressé le problème de Godlo en wet l'école Tizafa en Denry, Côte Garde en Denry, et cimetière. Côté Yokai régler les conditions de ce canal sala et bâtir l'autre neuf. Côté possibilité à exister pour une capacité de contrôler le de l'eau pour 25 ans pour venir. Projet a proposé qu'il travaille à ce canal sala qui est à peu près 250 mètres. Chef consultant Gagne Business Norman Senville, qui est responsable pour travailler le canal en commun Miku, a annoncé que les résidents en Blanchard qui ont trouvé un bénéfice de la construction de 104 mètres de canal par la commune de Rousseau, qui a un canal construit en total de 695 mètres. Pour les gens qui ont été pour conduire ce travail, ils ont été présentés la l'homme l'argent qui a été pour les gens le 11 et 12 septembre. Le travail a commencé bien vite après. Le travail de canal pour Denry, sous Escastri et Miku, j'ai trouvé Estimation en hauteur de 255 000 dollars, 5 770 000 et 3 millions de dollars chaque. Ce projet ça là, à l'argent ici. Pour la première fois en l'histoire cette ci le gouvernement PIA a un meeting cabinet en sud PIA dans la ville vieux fort même. La décision pour le meeting ça là, a suivi des gouvernements pour simuler l'opération et pour placer plus de clarté à son attention pour développer la façade sur cette ci Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasse a déclaré que, comme tout le monde peut savoir, la façade sur le pays est un qui a pour un chaîne marché côté tout l'autre développement qui est pour le coup. Mais ça n'a pas jamais venu en réalité. Présentement, il y a plusieurs gros projets qui ont été construits en sous le pays. En parmi eux, c'est la construction établissement nouveau pour avion jet gawi, ou développement aéroport Hiwanora, ou bâtissement l'hôpital Saint Jude, Ojo Lab, projet avec projet Pearl of the Caribbean qui presque a finissement première phase là. Premier ministre Chasne a ajouté que le gouvernement a continué pour travailler ensemble et puis peuple là pour l'occasionner un premier changement en développement pays cette fois-ci. Jodia. Nous avons continué et puis le ministre des Affaires et Éducation à ce mariage de l'école côté la panier assez étudiant pour l'Institut de l'Estuit. À ce dernier programme, il était parlé de l'école première et de sa petite enfant à Milet. On a dit que le changement a fait pour qu'il ne soit pas l'école placé dans une autre école. Et tout changement a été en place pour que l'école là au pu qu'il à présent. Nous allons là, moi, le premier ministre, nous sommes allés là vendredi, nous sommes contents avec ça, nous sommes là. Um, 
et peut-être qu'il y a fait des plis de bagailles quand l'école est ouverte, mais ça, c'est un bon projet. Nous faisons même bagaille là, et Grosley Infant et Grosley Primary, même bagaille là, ils ont mis l'école, ils ont retiré, nous menons de l'école là, ils ont la même bonne, ils ont l'autre ou ça. Alors, nous ça, ça nous voulons faire, c'est qu'on nous peut sauver un des petits dollars, nous ça fait ça, mais ce n'est pas juste pour sauver des dollars, mais c'est aussi pour nous ça. Um, bah, grand, plus bon opportunité pour ces mamans là et opportunité pour ces teachers ça uh, uh, maille skill set yo talent yo et bah, plus um, pour la petite ces ces étudiants nous avons fait même bagay là et mopo et patience nous savons mopo qui c'était en l'école um, l'église catholique c'était en mauvais 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 condition euh, ou après, moi parler de salaire, ou après, tu es écrit et tu es fait par un uh, gentilhomme, uh, M. Fontinade, et ou après, ça, il parlait de uh, mon peau. Et qualité de travail, là, yu, nous sommes pour faire mon peau pour mener en ordre. Alors, ni mon peau, ni patience, yo n'y pas ni um, quantité uh, étudiant l'école là te bâti pour chebe alors sa patience la pli neuf son belle tin école l'école hess il y a il y science lab il y it lab yo ni music un programme musique enfin il fait bon science pour ne yo de ensemble nan et ça 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 nous permet yo aussi nous kay bâti un uh, set classroom pour specialized classrooms donc il met au belle tin cuisine neuf yo kay yo belle tin music room enfin encore, nous avons mené ces deux sept ensemble et ensemble, nous avons fait plus de ces mamans. Paul, nous avons continué et puis on a fait le regard à ce programme. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons fait une nouvelle aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez fait la vie. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez fait la vie. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez fait la vie. Merci, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Over the extreme southern portion of the region, it will be partly cloudy to cloudy with scattered showers and possible isolated thunderstorms. Elsewhere, fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. A tropical wave will continue to produce cloudiness, scattered showers and possible isolated thunderstorms, mainly over the extreme southern portion of the region today. Another tropical wave located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the region from late Thursday into Friday. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 12.55 p.m. and will be high at 7.29 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was low at 2.22 p.m. and will be high again at 8.36 p.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters becoming slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0.6 to 1.2 meters tonight. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.